to The Rewind, I'm Megan McDonald. We had one of the biggest weekends thus far in the WAC as championship season goes on and men's and women's basketball starts up. The men's soccer tournament was held in Kansas City over the weekend and it did not lack drama. We'll take you out to see how the bracket unfolded. As you can see, UNLV beat San Jose State in the first round and CSU Bakersfield and Houston Baptist went all the way to penalty kicks, but the runners are the ones who advanced to the semis. Number one and two seeds coming off that first round by both advancing with the Red Hawks beating Bakersfield in a 4-0 decision and the Wolverines getting by in a close game but picking up the win 1-0 over former champs UNLV. Which puts us at the championship match, Seattle U Utah Valley Showdown. No score in the first half, 62nd minute. Connor Salmon fighting his way through multiple Red Hawk defenders, drawing that foul. Alex Neff is going to take the free kick. Check it out, upper 94, the goal too beautiful not to see one more time. Wolverines up, 1-0. Just a few minutes left in regulation and Utah Valley gets the foul call on them for a Seattle U penalty kick. Hamza Adati takes it and ties it up 1-1. The rock champ was going to be decided by PKs, and Hadadi back from injury gets another one, and the Red Hawks win their second title in three years. Both Seattle U and Utah Valley get bids to the NCAA tournament. Well, we haven't been to overtime yet this season, and we're getting, you know, going to the NCAA tournament. It's good to get this under our belt. Give Utah Valley a lot of credit. They had to play with 10 guys, uh, probably the last 20 minutes, and uh, that's a battle. You know, both teams are one and two in the conference, and the games are always going to be tight like this. So I have a sense they're going to go on to the NCAA tournament, and uh, clearly we are as well. So we kind of needed to go to overtime, to be honest with you, and we needed to go to penalty kicks. Last year we lost in penalty kicks against Bakersfield. It was great to uh, go five for five today. Take a look at the all-tournament team, two apiece from CSU Bakersfield and UNLV. That's keeper Nick Cleaver and Mario Iniquez, and for the Rebels, Danny Musovsky and Kevin Parita. Three UVU players also on the team, to no one's surprise, Alex Neff, Skylar Milne, and Connor Salmon, and the WAC champ Seattle, you had four players on the all-tournament team. That's Kyle Bjornathan, Sergio Rivas, and Cameron Rohani, and leading the pack as the tournament team MVP, David Olsen. Olsen had two goals in the conference tournament, both against Bakersfield, one at the 26th minute, rebound off the crossbar, and the other 56th minute header off a free kick to win in a 4-0 decision. Women's soccer also continued on this past weekend. WAC champ Utah Valley got that bid to the tournament and traveled right down the street to BYU. Let's take you out to what happened over in Provo. In its first ever NCAA tournament appearance, the Wolverines had six different players record a shot on the day, with Brianna McCarter leading the attack with a team-high two shots, including one on goal, but it just wasn't enough to withstand the 13th-ranked Cougars as they took an early lead in the 21st minute, but that goal was the only one. UVU lost the match in a 1-0 decision. Jessica Duffin wraps up her impressive career in the net as the all-time shutout leader with 17 registering a game-high five saves against BYU. Volleyball wrapped up its regular season this past weekend, and I don't say that lightly, as there was some serious drama with a tie between Bakersfield and Utah Valley fighting for that second place spot to get the first round by in the WAC tournament. If the Wolverines wanted it, they were gonna have to earn it the hard way, facing number one New Mexico State as they are undefeated in conference play. The Aggies headed to the WAC tournament leading the conference in hitting percentage, opponent hitting percentage, assists, and kills. In WAC matches only, New Mexico State also leads the WAC in hitting percentage, opponent hitting percentage, assists, and kills. And the Aggies picked up two more road wins this weekend, going undefeated in the conference, becoming just the fourth team ever and the first team besides Hawaii to do so since 1993. Take a look at the final bracket, Utah Valley ended up dropping to third, so they'll play number six UTRGV in the first round, while fourth and fifth play each other, that's Seattle U versus UMKC. Baker should grab that second place spot in the standings, getting that first round by, along with New Mexico State. The runners take on the winner of the Wolverine Vaqueros game, and the Aggies play the winner of the Red Hawks Ruse match. With all that action over the weekend, someone was bound to stand out, so let's take a look at Players of the Week. Basketball season is officially underway and Aggie forward Pascal Siakam did not go unnoticed in the opening weekend. The sophomore averaged 25.5 points, 
Nine and a half rebounds and three and a half blocks as New Mexico State split the weekend. After the first week of play, Siakam leads the WAC in scoring, block shots, and minutes per game. On the women's side, UTRGV's Mary Savoy, also a standout in opening weekend, the junior center averaged 14 points and 14 and a half rebounds per game as the Vaqueros split games at the Hampton Inn and Suites Islanders Classic. Don't forget, you can watch live games on the WAC Digital Network at WACsports.com live. For more information, check us out at WACsports.com or follow us on Twitter and Facebook.